Hello and welcome to today's webinar on FlowTherm XT meshing. The agenda for today is as follows. I first want to be able to show you the, the mesh topology. Let's take a look and see what the mesh looks like and then discuss how FlowTherm XT captures the geometric features of the parts within the model. Then we're going to jump into discussing kind of the process of meshing in FlowTherm XT. And this begins with the automatic global mesh generation. After that, we'll discuss the local mesh refinement. So even though FlowTherm XT has some automatic mesh generation, it allows for refining the mesh in discrete areas, areas deemed important for heat transfer and fluid flow. Lastly, we'll take a look at two demonstrations that uh, kind of outline the process of meshing in FlowTherm XT. So FlowTherm XT uses an octree-based Cartesian mesh. We see that the computational grid cells are rectangular, nearly square really, uh, in the computational domain. And as we approach the solid geometry, these cells split. One cell becomes eight cells as we approach the, the geometry that we need to resolve. Now once we get closer, we see that we have a situation where we have one computational grid cell here that has both solid and fluid in it. So this would be a cut cell. So we want to discuss what FlowTherm XT does in this situation. So we had that's our computational grid cell and FlowTherm XT splits this into multiple regions. One control volume is going to be solid and it's going to have this shape. So we see it's no longer Cartesian. It's shaped as the geometry is shaped. And on each side we have a fluid cell. So that one computational grid cell is split into three separate control volumes, accurately capturing the, the shape of that geometry. If we look at another example here, we just have a uh, printed circuit board that has the layers modeled discreetly. Over on the left, we're showing a plot of the thermal conductivity so we can kind of see the copper layers and the dielectric layers. So let's focus on one computational grid cell, the one that I have outlined in blue here. So FlowTherm XT is going to split this into a control volume that contains the fluid. Here, an upper area, that's the dielectric, the conductor layer, and again, the dielectric layer below that. So FlowTherm XT's immersed boundary approach and cut cell technology allows us to capture the actual geometry on a fine mesh or a coarser mesh because of the ability to split the cells. So now let's discuss the, the process of meshing in FlowTherm XT. And this begins with the automatic global mesh generation. The first control we have for this is what we call the mesh resolution level. It has standard, enhanced, and advanced. So let's first take a look at standard. So this is what very simple example of just an extrusion with a channel inside it. The mesh resolution level controls the mesh away from the geometry, the size of those grid cells, and also, uh, as a result, how much mesh we're going to have within the channel. If we jump up to enhanced, we can see these cells on the outside are smaller. The cells are split once to capture this area in the narrow channel. So ultimately, we're getting more cells in this channel. And then we go advanced. This again is smaller cells yet and, and finer mesh within this channel. But we see with our local mesh controls, we can control the mesh within these channels somewhat independently of what's going on on the outside. The other control that affects the global mesh generation is the minimum feature size. One example of a minimum feature would be for the heatsink smart part where it's going to be the thin thickness, usually a, a small dimension. And again, for the heatsink smart part, the minimum gap size would be the distance between the fins. So as you build a model, FlowTherm XT looks at all the geometry within that model and determines what is the smallest feature that needs to be resolved in that model and uses that as the setting for the global mesh generation process. Once the global mesh generation process is complete, we're, we can further control the mesh by local mesh refinement. So again, let's look at our simple example of a kind of a notched block where we have just kind of a standard mesh level 
and just a, a few grid cells in the channel. The ways that we can control the mesh locally are geometry. So here I've added mesh within the solid of the geometry. We can address fluid channels explicitly with one of the settings on the local mesh refinement. And we can control the mesh in what we call a local region. So here I've just used a second object to be able to specify mesh in this, this corner for illustration. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. So if we're finding mesh on geometry, we'll use this as an example of printed circuit board. And what we're looking at here is the mesh after the automatic global mesh generation process. So based on the default settings, you know, Flowtherm XT has captured all the features in this piece of geometry. It has captured the holes, this kind of cutout area, and this notched area. Now we may want to resolve this geometry in more detail. We can control the mesh on the boundary between the solid and the fluid, and this would be partial cells. So that area where the cells would be cut by a solid and a fluid, we could call those partial cells, and this setting allows us to focus the refined mesh just in those boundaries. We also can control the mesh within the solid itself. So that's an example of that. The other local mesh control we have is to do with fluid channels. So let's look at the, the mesh after the automatic global mesh generation of this, of this heat sink. So again, the process has resolved all the features of the geometry, but we may want to add mesh in the channels between the fins. Now we can do that with something we call narrow channel refinement. Again, I can focus the mesh directly in those channels and have a finer resolution in the channels themselves. The other mesh control we have is what we call local regions. So Flowtherm XT has a region smart part which allows us to assign mesh controls that affect the size of the mesh in the fluid, the solid, or partial cells. So in this example, I have told it to have fluid cells of a certain size everywhere within the bounds of that region. And the region can be any arbitrary shape. Um, you can have multiple objects inside it. It's just to control the mesh in geometry or away from geometry. So that's the way you can control the mesh, the automatic global mesh generation process, followed by the user local mesh refinement. So the two examples we're going to use to illustrate these concepts are this uh, board level model where I have both a arbitrary kind of geometric solid geometry heatsink and also the heatsink smart part. The second example will be this smartphone. We're looking at exploded view here where I have a couple interface materials, some RF cans uh, and a display. So we'll look at meshing these two models. So let me open Flowtherm XT. Okay, so I've loaded the board model into Flowtherm XT and let's take a look at how we're going to mesh it. So the first part of the process is the automatic process, but let's look at the controls for that. So we access the first control under mesh control and we can see that the mesh level is set to standard resolution. Now again, we have it enhanced and advanced. Standard is fine for almost every case because we have the local mesh controls where we can refine the mesh where we need it. So I'm fine with standard. The minimum feature size, minimum gap size for the global setting are found under the components node. And right now these are automatically set values. What Flowtherm XT does is it scans the model, looks at all the geometry, and picks up the minimum feature size, minimum gap size associated with each part. The smallest value is brought up to the, the root node or the component level. Now, because I'm using the heatsink smart part, it has automatically set the minimum feature size and minimum gap size associated with that part. These happen to be the smallest values, so they're being set at the system level. So I'm fine with these values, they're good. Now, I'm using heatsink, so it's typical to want to refine the mesh within the channels, so we're going to use narrow channel refinement for that. We'll start with the smart part heatsink. So every, every part in Flowtherm XT has properties and one of those properties is local mesh. So this is going to become part of the definition of this part. Right now we see that 
the automatic minimum feature size is one millimeter and the minimum gap size is 3.8 millimeters. So I'm fine with those values. They're set appropriately and narrow channels turned on. So everything's set in there. Now I want to do the same thing for this CAD based heatsink, but I need to set the minimum feature size and minimum gap size appropriately. So I know I measured these earlier. This fin thickness is a half a millimeter. The distance between the fins is one and a half millimeters. So I'm going to set those values in this CAD based heatsink. So let me double click on this, turn on local mesh. I don't want to use the automatic minimum feature size. I know the fins are a half millimeter thick, so I'll set that. The minimum gap size I know is one and a half millimeters, so I'll leave that there. And yes, I want to turn on narrow channel. So I've set that. Now we can see these icons change. Once I've activated the local mesh, the icon for that part adds a little mesh symbol to indicate to me that it has local mesh settings. The last part I'm going to mesh is this region. Now that's a region smart part and it has slightly different local mesh controls. It gives me direct control over the mesh cell size. So for this region, I want to control the fluid cell size and not five millimeters. I want those fluid cells to be two millimeters. So I've set the two millimeters and I'm fine with that. So those are all the settings I'm going to make to mesh this model. So now let's run the meshing process. Let's generate the mesh. Okay, let's take a look at the mesh to see if we've got the mesh that we want. So let's start by looking at this cut plot. I'll change the view here. So yes, we've the narrow channel refinement has refined the mesh in each one of those channels. That looks great. So let me hide that. Next we'll look at the smart part, heat sink. Cells in the channels look good. Hide that one. And lastly, let's look at the region. So let's kind of rotate the view here. And let me grab a couple faces of that region so we can see where it is. And we can see the mesh in there has been resolved to the level I specified. So the mesh looks good. Um, we're ready to run the model. Now let me load the other model and we'll look at meshing that. Okay, so I've loaded the smartphone model into Photherm XT and let's take a look at meshing this. First, let's uh, explore the model a little bit. Um, what do I have in here? So we have the outer case. We have a display, backlit display, uh, battery. Here's our PCB with multiple layers. Um, a chip processor and then the blue extrusions are my thermal pads. Okay, so let's look at uh, meshing this. Now we're going to do a little something a little bit different in this example. Uh, I want to be able to illustrate how Flutherm XT is able to capture the geometry on a coarser mesh. So if we look at the default minimum feature size, it's set to 0.1 millimeters. And that's coming from the, the thickness of one of those thermal pads. So I want to kind of just overwrite that and let's use a minimum feature size of one millimeter. Okay, now I'm going to mesh the model. Okay, so I meshed the model and I went ahead and ran one iteration with the solver so we could take a look at how the mesh is resolving the geometry. And I just ran the, the solver one iteration, which took uh, 34 seconds. Okay, so let's look at a plot. First, I want to get in this cut view. This is where we're going to focus. And I want to then show my cut plot. Okay, so we have a lot going on geometrically. And what we're plotting is solid thermal conductivity in the X direction. So here's our outer case. We can see, you know, the mesh level isn't going to capture this curvature. But in a lot of cases, capturing it this way is going to be quite fine for analysis. Now we can always add some partial cell refinement on this if we want to capture that exactly as it is. But this is really going to be good for me. Here is my one of my cans. Here is the first pad, here's the second pad, and up here I have my different layers, my PCB. 
So even at this coarse level of mesh, I am capturing all of this geometry accurately. Again, this corner is being um, cut off a little bit, but I could fix that if I thought that that was important. Okay, let's discuss some of the important elements of Fluotherm XT meshing. Okay, before we open it up for questions, I'd like to just summarize some of the major points we discussed today. Flowtherm XT uses an octree-based Cartesian mesh. So the base mesh is Cartesian and those cells, one cell would become eight cells and it's refined as you near the geometry to more accurately resolve the geometry and physics. Once Flowtherm XT encounters a, a cell that contains both solids and fluids, is a cut cell, then it splits that cell into areas of both solid and fluid that take the shape of the geometry and no longer are necessarily Cartesian. The meshing begins with the automatic global meshing process where based on the minimum feature size and minimum gap size are going to resolve all the features within the geometry. The user has full control to further refine this mesh in areas uh, in the solid, in the fluid, or in the solid fluid boundaries.